yeah sure so i'm going to start now uh, a very good evening to one and all so today i'm going to start the session about azure cloud services and the others so just a minute i'm going to share my ppt with you yeah i think my screen is visible to you all so yesterday uh, we have understood about the some cloud fundamental concepts like uh, pass service saas service and ias service and what is public cloud and what is private cloud and what is hybrid cloud so and also we have learned about some basic uh, things and what are the benefits of using cloud computing so we have completed 20% of the syllabus to achieve the microsoft azure certification so now we are going to the next chapter called understand core azure services so core azure services so i am start going to start now got it so uh, in order to start this core azure services so we have to uh, know about the what are the key concepts and what are the concepts that are involved in this chapter so in this chapter we learn about uh, regions and availability zones resource groups and azure resource manager and again benefits and usage of azure core services so we will get the repetitive tasks and repetitive words from previous chapter so now also we will learn about the compute engine and virtual machines virtual machine skill sets app service and functions and also we will learn about the networking concepts and storage concepts database concepts and also we will also learn about the azure marketplace so and and uh, later we will learn about that uh, the technologies that are integrated with the cloud and the technologies that are involved in cloud so here are the concepts we learn we will learn now so the internet of things and next big data and analytics artificial intelligence serverless computing and benefits and outcomes of the azure solutions so and also we will learn about the the tools that are integrated by azure so also called as azure cli command line interface and azure powershell or also called as power bash and also we will use azure port we will know about the azure portal how to use azure portal and everything so today i will give you some practical experience and as well as the theoretical experience regarding the today's topic so next coming to the chapter so what is yesterday i have explained that what is a azure and what is a cloud and what is a service so azure is a type of cloud service provider which is managed by the microsoft and at the same time cloud is a group of services that are provided through internet and again the service uh the uh, it's a kind of uh, giving information or data or any kind of uh, work that can be done when you are paying something for that service so like uh, when we are paying for a service like we are going to a restaurant uh, we are paying for the meal and at the same time we are paying for the bearer so he is the one who is managing like serving the people and take, taking bills to the people and everything he is acts as a medium between the uh, the person who is cooking and the person who is consuming so it's all, in, in our language we, we can also called as api application programming interface so here also they are providing some services so service is a kind of work that can be provided uh, when we are using a particular resource or a particular uh, um, management tool like that so today i am going to tell about azure cloud service azure cloud service is an offering from microsoft for hosting various types of applications including web applications background processing applications and even virtual machines created within azure infrastructure as a service so here the services can be of different types so if you are using infrastructure as a service means here also service is there because at the end of the word we are seeing that infrastructure as a service so the word service is there so in the platform as a service platform as a service service is the word is there at the end and software as a service so in each of these terms infrastructure platform software we are getting service from the particular resource ma- resource provider or the service provider so 
uh, in it we are having two types of roles involved in this cloud services azure cloud service one is web role so this role is meant for hosting web applications it's where our website or web application resides for example if you are hosting an e-commerce website on azure so your storefront and checkout processes would run in web role like uh, for example you are having an e-commerce website so you are uh, get your daily you are seeing that how many people are ordering the products and how many people are uh, delivering are getting delivery from the particular source and how many are getting delays or is there any issue with the particular providing so all these things are managed in a particular website or an application even an app is working in the mobile means it all it also need to connect to the internet and a web application is running inside it so don't confuse about web application and uh, android applications so these are the two uh, those are also called as applications but still they need internet to run in background so here we are having two roles web role and worker role web role is used for deploying and managing the web application it's also called as front end we are we, what we call today is called front end so if you want to change the buttons or if you want to change the key features or the functionality of the particular resource means we are using web role or if you are if you want to change the background databases or storage uh, requirement or anything or uh, scalability resource so all these things if you want to change those particular resource means we are using background processing applications also called as worker roles so i think you understand about now what is the azure cloud service and what are the roles that are involved in this process azure cloud services is an designed for hosting web applications and background processing applications so in it there are two roles involved one is web role and another one is wor worker role so here if you see for example you have created an uh, application like uh, my my name is pradeep so if i created a web application called pradeep so it's it, it called as uh, yeah, my your cloud service dot na dot uh, name dot cloud app dot net this this is called as uh, dns name so domain name server so this dns name is used for accessing web applications over internet like uh, for example i have created a html page so uh, like uh, whatever the things i have css and everything i have added to it so when i open, when i double click on the particular uh, uh, application the application is open in my chrome in a single page so it only available to my to my to me only so when i want to show it to the other people means it need to be have it need it need to have access to internet otherwise it need to be deployed in internet then only who are the people who are, who are who are the people we are going to target so they will see that the particular website yeah whatever you now we see that amazon flipkart and ventra zomato whatever it is so all these web, web apps are deployed in a particular server are having their own server so most of the time all these websites are using cloud services only because they are scalable and easy to manage and there is no there is no chance of there is no risk at all and, uh, and at the same time uh, uh, how can i say means uh, even the management whatever this called as administration network administration data administration sql administration all these things is not there in our side if they are there in our side means it is much complex than the normal ones so that's all with it so now i understood about web role and worker role so now going to the azure subscription so everybody is using netflix disney podster and next uh, amazon prime everything so if you want to use that particular uh, ott platform means we need to subscribe right so we are paying for some money to see that uh, 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 like to see the movies and web series what you want to see for example uh, uh take the netflix in it if you there are four types of features there first one is 99 rupees per month so in that there is only one mobile or one laptop otherwise only one mobile i think so so we can see in one mobile only at one time so we can't access that that particular account in smart tvs or in ifp panels or in projectors it's not possible to to that particular type of account so later the next subscription is using in two or more devices 
and the next one is 3 to 4 devices and later 4 plus devices so going from one one subscription to another we are seeing that there is a change in price and the change in services also in the in the first one there is only one we can see in mobile or in laptop at the end we can see in smart tv laptop mobile and even projectors or whatever it is big screen so we can see in more than four devices so the price match may vary from one uh, one subscription to another so based on this we can say that the subscription is a type of thing which is managing the resources and services based on our price and our requirement that's it so now coming to the next one so what is the main role of azure cloud service so services why we are using cloud means we need service right so without using service means why we are using that so everybody is creating gmail or outlook mail for some purpose like for you sending mails or for send, uh, for sharing the documents through mails or for sharing images uh, in google uh, like particular storage locations like google drive or one drive so we are getting some service from them that's why we are creating account and everything so in this year we are in azure cloud service majorly now we are don't we don't want to focus on the storing data and sending data those are just some basic fe- features of the basic services that are provided by the particular service provider so there are some much more services provided by the azure cloud service so you can call this we can deploy a multi tier web application in azure so for example we have some full stack application like uh, where we are using cloud service in it and we have html css javascript in it and at the same time it is having an android application and at the same time ios application and it is also used in, uh, it having own app set to run so these are also called as multi tier web applications so they are having one or more forms to de- to deploy so in order to manage all these things we have we need to have some one server but because of this budget issues and some normal uh, technical issues we are unable to make that so at that time we are going to rent some services from the uh, cloud service providers so that's why that's what we called as uh, azure cloud service so then i coming to the next one defining multiple multiple roles to distribute processing allow, allow, allow flexible scaling of your application so um, how can i say means for example you bought some, you bought one server for your own company so you have only some requirement of the particular server most of the thing it's uh, not used at all so at that time we feel that uh, the budget we are spending on the capital is more than the operational expenditure so if it may it may have some serious effect on that company and the budget issues and have budget issues so we are going to distribute processing and allow flexible scaling of your application so as i said before network administrator database administrator sql administrator so like these administrators are managing all the resources so in a azure there is a role called azure administrator and there is also certification called az104 for this for this role so those who are the whoever the managing the azure from starting step to ending stage are giving access or permissions and restricting the users is all managed by the azure administrator only so it allows us to manage one role to manage all the things for example uh, if we having database uh, there is a particular role called database administrator so if we having some sql tools like uh, table u excel and everything so there is a role called uh, sql administrator he is managing the particular one and again there is a called network administrator he is managing the network and everything so in order to make that that much roles we are spending so many so many much much budget on that particular roles giving salary to them and uh, it's becoming complex so now we are having a single role called azure administrator so all these roles are managed by him only itself so he taught he'll know about that uh, what is sql and what is administration of sql and he is know about the database and he know about the azure whole azure thing so whatever the thing he will manage everything and he will also guide the particular user or at the particular employer regarding the cloud service and the resources provided by the cloud so these are the this is the matter what i have right means all 
what i'm saying is the same topic so don't don't worry about i will share the ppt with you you can see later so the main advantage of the cloud services is the ability to support more complex multi-tier architectures so that's the main thing we are going to manage more complex architecture by, by, by using cloud that's it so next coming to the services which are used to manage resources in azure so for example uh, what's the difference between service and resource so i will say now resources is nothing but uh, you having laptop you are having a smart mobile smartphone and you also having a desktop and these are all the resources you have like uh, um uh, desktop for desktop pc for uh, gaming purpose or developing complex applications laptop for uh, when you are going outside means it is easy to carry portable portability and smartphone for your own daily personal issue personal things so we having three items with us so now think about that we are spending a amount of more than 2 lakhs or nearly 2.5 lakhs on these all these resources so those are called resources so by all this use by using these resources we are gaining some services like when when you are using mobile phone means we are we are going to see messages from the whatsapp or instagram or gmail whatever it is we are going to take pictures we are going to send messages we are there it is providing some kind some kind of service to us next going to the laptop so it's based uh, due to its portability we can take it anywhere and we can all develop it anywhere so we can charge and develop applications and we can deploy at any time when you have con- connection to that particular network and again when you having desktop it's in our uh, own home so when we are easy to like when we are deploying complex applications when we are designing a huge applications means when you need to large screen to manage in everything so those are three, those three items are providing us some particular kind of service so now we understand that what is the service and what is the kind of uh, resources so now yeah now i'm saying about the the, res- the services which is used to manage res- resources in azure so sorry for the words it's getting some little bit nervous so i'm going to the next one yeah sorry so uh, there are so many services that are used to manage resources in azure i am saying the major ones one is application insights so when you are uh, deploying an application called uh, any web application maybe a portfolio website or a uh, like one own e-commerce website so if you are deploying a website we can see that how many people are reaching out to your website and also how many people are ordering through your website and what is the statistics or the graph chart what is the uh, data analytics for the particular website will be shown in application insights next one azure portal so through this azure portal we can edit our code and again redeploy our application so it's the key feature in azure the user who is managing the application can edit and deploy the application that's the main feature of this uh, azure and next one is azure resource manager so it is also called as arm so azure resource manager is managing the resources in a different manner for example yesterday i said that if you want to remove or add resources means just like uh, we can add and remove resources based on our availability so it's not that much easy like removing a chocolate in a box and removing the ch- add, adding a chocolate into a box so they need some access and they need some permissions and they need a particular role to do all these things so without any authorization they don't uh, add or remove anything so whenever the billing is happened the resource must be there and the resource must provide service to the people who are using the service so arm azure resource manager is the one thing a tool which is used to managing the resources by customizing the resources by adding resources or, or removing the resources that's the thing next one is log analytics so as i said before application insights application insights means we are uh, giving the idea about the what is what how many are viewing how many are what, use, utilizing it how uh, what is the today count of uh, uh orders and getting so like this we are get we can see that insights of the particular application but analytics is different from the insights insights is the information that is gained by the analytics so uh 
log analytics so we can say that um, for example uh, you, you know about the log means for in your daily life example you are having a mobile phone and you having a phone option so daily we are calling so many people and we are getting so many missed calls and so many we are going to dial so many persons and we have answered some of the mobiles and some are not, some are cancelled and some are blocked so like this happen so our uh, insights tells us how may, uh, what is the time of uh, uh, like how much time we are spending on instagram how, uh, how much time we are going to talk with a particular person and like that we are knowing to know log analytics say that each day how many missed calls came and each day how many people are calling you and each day how many spam calls or uh, unwanted restricted calls coming to for you so it's a log application like uh, it's a register where we are getting list wise so from that only we are getting insights and we can see the assume assumed ones so these are the major uh, services that are uh, used to manage resources in azure so by using these resources uh, like by using these services we can manage the azure be, uh, and also we can uh, add or remove the resources that's it uh, like uh, you, you are going to manage a shop or bakery based on the customers only we are making the cakes otherwise we will stop the making cakes when we get the order then only we will make the cakes so we are spending budget right so we need to get the profits from a particular business so that's the main feature we are telling here so also what are the three major main components of the windows azure platform so any compute system there are only three major things compute storage app fabric so app fabric is not that much not that much important it also called as networking in our current actually in previous 2022 it is also called as network now it is calling app fabric so compute compute also called as compute engine a yeah, compute engine refers to the the hardware infrastructure whatever we are using like uh, processor or ram or uh, https apis or operating system whatever it is the disk the disk uh, the disk storage disk all comes under in the compute compute engine next to storage storage refers to the the data which is going to store and how and how it is separated like as i said said before buckets buckets are the kind of uh, storage resources in cloud in which they are separating the data in based on the data type like jpg jpeg png pdf so i think you know about that uh, different differences between the jpg jpeg png i don't need to say about that so next coming to the network network is a secured connection between the two devices through internet so everybody is having some ip address even your laptop is having an ip address and even every device which is using through internet having an ip address so uh, the least one is 0.0.0.0 that's the basic one and the topmost one is uh, 255.255.255 .255 so in there the some of the we can call it as tcp or ip ports so that that those are all comes under computer network topics i don't want to say all these topics so if, you, if there is a need i will say in later sub topics later sessions okay so next coming to the geography so is the uh, interesting topic in our 10th class or in in our 9th class subjects so here geography refers to the continents the are the larger bodies that are involved in the computer uh, storage system or cloud service system so here uh, there are majorly because uh, 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 five things there america europe asia pacific middle east and africa so today i also, I also need to say about the continents to you so you know from top order we can say that asia is the largest continent and next one is africa third one is north america fourth one is south america and fifth one is uh, um, europe sixth one is australia seventh one is antarctica so these are the continents that are involved in our earth so there is no data centers or no people that are living in antarctica so there is no cloud service providers at all in that uh, particular region so 
coming to the geography so due to some uh, data restrictions and data policies and jurisdictions so the data centers are established based on the particular policies are uh, like country policies and that particular state policy so so an azure geography is a discrete market typically containing two or more regions that preserve data residency or compliance boundaries so when coming to the america if you want to say america means it also involving north america and south america also now coming to the europe europe is a group of countries like paris france germany like uh, like these countries are involved like germany france and next england next to spain whatever it is all are involved in this particular europe region and asia pacific asia pacific means including india is also called a subcontinent including india and all other sub uh, countries that are called indonesia jakarta and next uh, singapore uh, malaysia kuala lumpur like these countries are in, all involved in this like middle east islands what we call middle east not asia pacific islands all are involved in this particular region middle east in the sense uh, like uh, it is also comes under european region only so next coming to the africa africa is the biggest continent so these are the vast measure, vast bodies where the data centers are established next coming to the regions in that particular continent there are some few boundaries established based on that particular region uh, re- resource providing or the topography so in that europe they have di- differentiated the north europe west europe germany north germany west central like this no- north virginia south virginia and next uh, paris uh, like like this they have dis- differentiated based on the region so one country policy is different from another country so like this is happen next one availability zones so in that particular north europe or west europe zones regions we are going to subdivide the rules like i can say in india for example india is a subcontinent we can say that it also ha- called as geography geographical structure so in it north india north india south india east india west india so four regions are four regions are there for us in that particular region there are so many states so we can differentiate them as so in south india andhra pradesh zone 1 telangana zone 2 tamil nadu zone 3 karnataka zone 4 and kerala zone 5 so this is the best example i can say that for you to understand so like this the company who are the microsoft or amazon or google they have established their data centers in their particular regions at that time so in india also having we have data centers in mumbai in chennai in hyderabad and in delhi so there are four data centers available in india so next availability sets so availability sets coming means uh, for example in zone 1 like in andhra pradesh something like due to some cyclones and other reasons that uh, service is stopped so at that time what are whoever the people residing in andhra pradesh is not getting the service so at that time whoever the zones residing telangana kerala or tamil nadu they are not affected by this cyclone so those are the availability sets near to the particular zone so they can easily replicate the data and share the data to the particular person so these are called through they are connected to the through a particular con- network so these are all advanced topics those, those are not, not that much needed in this here so next this is the hierarchy of the uh, like topography of the data centers geography region availability zone availability set and fall domain or update domain so i can i want i can say that in in just a single line manner update domain means when a maintenance even occurs like when I, due to some disaster so there is an there is something maintenance or anything happening in a particular zone so at that time there is no service in that particular uh, zone so so the it's going to update the service or it's going to update the resources in that particular zone so it is called update domain fall domain means uh, i'll close on in the data center so i uh, see that these are not that much important so i can going with next topic so these are not going at all so as i said before azure resource manager 
ARM what is azure resource manager and what are the benefits of ARM over the classic services cloud ser cloud services so as i said before azure resource manager is the deployment methodology strategy to deploy our azure components in azure in azure so it lacks like a container of multiple resources however it can span across regions and services mm, i can give you an example of azure resource manager so mm, for example you are you are all working in a particular company so you are having some particular work you are going to complete the work and at the end of the month you are getting the salary so uh, there is a person who is managing all these things so coming to the starting one chairman md and next uh, ceo or vice vice ceo like like this roles are there so each each person having a particular role and having designation to to do a particular task so so everybody is doing a particular service using some resources like uh, accountant uh, using the data of students who are paying who are paying the bills and he is giving a report on that particular month payment bills and also um, the cashier who are, who is um, Um, like um, getting the payment bills is storing the money and and uh, store uh, and going to bank and depositing the particular money so like this everybody is doing a particular task so azure resource manager means managing the resource in a particular manner by adding or customizing the resources that's the only thing so don't go that much deep in this particular topic it's uh, just manage management of resources within a particular application that's it so now going to the next topic so now i'm going to t tell you about the what the as i said before compute engine networking virtual machines hosting applications like this so you having some doubt what are all these things still i don't know about what is going on this this person pradeep is saying what the all the topics and everything from starting i don't know single word what is host engine or compute engine or everything so i am going to say about some brief idea about what is what in a simple manner so the compute engine is the uh, basic structure or the basic thing to learn in cloud computing so this is the uh, the compute engine is the managing all the resources or all the services in that particular cloud cloud engine cloud or a compute engine so now going in compute engine in compute engine we are having virtual machines like uh, we can say that a machine is a uh, uh, item or any kind of device which is used to do a particular task in easy manner and also reduces the time of doing up the particular task that's that is the definition of a machine so for example we i am having a laptop of 16 gb ram i am also having 512 gb ssd so i can perform well but when i am going to run android studio in my particular laptop the ram and the ssd is not that much effective to do a particular task and the graphics won't support in my laptop because i don't have any graphic card in my laptop so at that time i am going to add some virtual machine i am like from a cloud service or anything so virtual machines are uh, the uh, like uh, virtual in the sense we are going to say virtual meet or online meet means we are the person is there but the person is not real in that so we are also getting the resources the 16 gb kind of extra 32 gb ram and extra 512 gb ssd and also an, another os my laptop os is intel i am going to get the nvidia or rtx os so like this i am going to get into my laptop and using all the things and deploying the application so it will went uh, it went good and the application run successfully so that's the thing so virtual machine scale sets for example i am i am the one who uh, uh, deploying the application so i need one or more applications so one or more virtual machines if the task is complex and the web web, uh, web architecture is multi tier means we need more virtual machines to like uh, for example gmail is there 
you are using gmail more than 20 crore persons in india are using gmail so everybody is having an indiv- individual mail everybody is having an individual send- sending box so in order to check the spam thing like if any uh, like any hacker ma- hacker mails or any spam mails came means it will it will automatically identify that particular uh, spam mail and it automatically sent to the junk, junk folder so everybody is having their own virtual machine in them so it is managing all the things so it's, it, in uh, in our language we can call it as threads in java everybody is using threads right so one one thread or multi threads so this this concept is very interesting in your free time please refer to that particular topic so app service so computer engine allows us to as i said before i am deploying an application in my laptop using the resources from the cloud service so it is giving me an app app, app service so platform as a service offered to to build deploy and scale enterprise grade web and mobile and api apps so that's the thing so because of this compute engine i am going to build an application in my laptop and i can deploy the application and also i can manage the resources adding to them and removing to them based on my requirement that's the thing next going to the azure functions so in c language or c++ language everybody learned about the functions a function is nothing but when we want to run an uh, code like uh, like c equal to a plus b every time we are going to run the thing when when the input is giving so in order to reduce the number uh, uh, run time we are going using functions so it it automatically incrementing for loop is also called as function while loop is also called a function and also do while is also called as a function so like this functions make us to iterate the thing so as azure functions are even driven serverless compute services like serverless is a word please understand this topic clearly server serverless server means the connection between the sender and the receiver through a particular network serverless is also kind of same thing but if you are using a net, uh, a particular service from a particular server when you are not using also the billing happen like you are uh, the service is providing throughout the day 24 hours and 7 days 365 days you are paying for that particular resource throughout the year but serverless means when you are using then only you have to pay the bill otherwise you, you will be not charged at all so that's the main thing you have learned about the what is server and serverless so a, a function is there in, in it and the function activated when when you are using that particular resource and the function automatically deactivates when it when you are not using that particular resource that's the thing so now going to the networking so networking means the connection here in the word means network net the connection between the devices or the connection um, between the devices through internet or any platform so in that there are uh, five things i have mentioned here virtual network connect vms to incoming virtual private connections so everybody is using vpns like uh, if you want to see watch a movie uh, which is uh, called private piracy in india so we are using ip address uh, to deploy so we are going to deploy this application uh, in a pad- sorry 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 for the inconvenience for example if you want to watch a movie in internet so then at that just a minute just a minute ma'am sorry for the inconvenience guys so there's a audio issue with me so i think you are audible so am i audible to you all yeah i think i'm audible so virtual network as i said before if you want to see some pirate pirated movies or anything from different uh, sources means we are going to use vpns <laughs> so it will change the ip address from to different country so at that time we can that country loss are not affected this uh, resources so then we can watch that particular movie so at the, also when we are using services like da- sharing data from one person to another person so no other uh, no other person need to see that data 
so like uh, you are not interested to share the data publicly so you want to share the data uh, private mode so when so you have to use vpns so to connect to virtual machines next load balancers so for example you have 512 gb of storage data and also you having uh, additional storage up to 1 tb but if the data may exceed means in your laptop you can get a warning signal on everything but in cloud it automatically manages everything so if the load load balance is a thing which balances the inbound and outbound connections to applications or service endpoints for example your capacity of the particular website to receive targets is 1000 or 5000 per hour but it may exceeds to 10000 or 15000 sometimes at that time the server or the website may crash so in order to manage these things we need load balancers so next vpn gateway for again so everybody is going to college so when we are going to college what's the first thing we see means our college gate and the watchman who is uh, security at in, in that particular place so vpn gateway means access schedule network through high performance vpn gateways so uh, like i can say that um, in a simple manner so there is a main entrance to your college so it's the biggest one so any so at, at a time we can nearly 500 people can go through that particular route and also there are some other routes to our college from back side or side sides or any some normal gates so so we need um, high performance means we need to choose the, the best one to go through so for example um, how can i say so there is i am not getting any particular example to say this so i am leaving even leaving this one so um Uh, these are, I, I think up to three, these three are enough for the certification. These are those are not that much important here. So content delivery network and application gateway are the advanced topics in ne- next one. I need I need to say brief brief about in next topics because uh, CDN is not a simple topic to say. So next one stories, yeah. I think this is the interesting one because why we are still using cloud means we can say that we are storing the data. we are storing the we are storing the files we are storing the images and we are storing the videos audio clips whatever it is we are saying that we are using cloud for storing the data most of the people don't know how the cloud is working simply they are saying we are going to store the data that's it that's the major thing so on the first one is blob storage so this storage service is for large objects such as video clips or bitmaps like if you having the file exceeds uh terabytes of data and gigabytes of data so we can use this type of storage service and also disk storage uh it's the storage pro- provides disks for virtual machines applications and other services and the next one is file storage azure files offers fully managed file shares in the cloud like uh, we can share the file within the cloud like okay. for example in in azure one drive in one drive i have created a folder called azure for azure um, files so in the particular fi- folder i have created a file called file 1 file 2 file 3 so when i'm going to share this file i don't need to download the particular uh, uh, file and i don't need to share that uh, particular file to the particular person i can share that file through that particular uh, service uh, through in one drive only so that's what is saying file storage next archive storage storage facility for data that is rarely accessed so everybody is using whatsapp you know archived charts so when we are not using that particular type of uh, number and why we are not we are accessing that, that particular number means we can say we can move it to the archived charts like this we are using in telegram also when you are getting uh, t- continuous messages or when you are not responding the particular message means is also comes under archive so the storage facility for da- da- data that is rarely accessed so next databases so database is the na- next top next uh, important topic 
so in that the, there is only tools there is no theoretical subjects or these theoretical points you need to remember it's purely based on the tools the, the first one is azure cosmos db so it's a globally distributed database that supports no sql options no sql means not only sql so you are have learned about mongo db so mongo db is a kind of no sql database that's purely that's uh, use it uh, majorly because of uh, main stack applications and the uh, main stack applications so main refers to mongodb express js react js and node js next main main refers to uh, mongodb express angular and node js so like this in in this that type of development applications we are using nosql because uh, what's the difference between sql and nosql i can say that because sql refers to the relational data it's only having that uh, rows and columns what we are seeing in uh, excel sheets so we are having rows and columns to store the data because it's having two dimensional data but also we having if we have three third dimensional data means how we can manage the data we can see that in uh, data mining we are having a three dimensional model called olap and oltp online transaction processing and online online analytical processing so if you having a big data means we need to store the data and analyze the data so at that time two dimensional data won't work so we need to use nosql database so it's it's a multi dimensional database used for clouds or any web applications are like that so next one is azure sql database it's a fully managed relational database with auto scale in in integral intelligence and robust security so as i, as I said before nosql means not only sql it also manages the third dimensional data in azure sql database it's the fundamental one so it manages the two dimensional data relational data data so next azure data migration service migrates your database to the cloud with no application code changes so data migration cloud migration and like this concepts are uh, in later concept in later such have subjects we will learn about them so i can say that migration is from transferring from one place to another place migration refers to the so azure database migration service refers to the for example you having your college database it's in particular kind of uh, using mysql so it's not efficient to for you all so we are go you are going to shift migrate to the azure database or aws database or gcp database so it it is it is used to manage and storage and also it is used to share with the people also so based on availability we are going to migrate the data so next one is azure sql data warehouse data warehouse refers to the like for example you are getting the products from the flipkart amazon everything right so what you are calling is from you are you, know, you will get from distributors but when the company manufactures all these products they are going to kept uh, in one place it is called as warehouse so like this when the data from different sources came means like uh, for example microsoft is company is there so microsoft company is having different kinds of uh, web applications different kinds of data sources and different kinds of uh, partners are there so like uh, hospital data like uh, civil civil infrastructure data and like uh, oil and natural gas data so different kinds of data is there so we have to store all this data in a particular uh, data warehouse so to manage when when we need a particular data means we will get that uh, particular data so a group of data bases is called a data warehouse and a group of data warehouse is called as data lake so i think you understand about that so now i'm going to next one so previously I said about the it also having you know, uh, azure cloud service also involves internet of things big data and analytics artificial intelligence uh, yeah, i like that so in internet of things there are three main things iot hub iot central and iot edge so internet of things refers to the connecting the devices to through internet like we having bluetooth so through bluetooth we are going to connect the earbuds and also we, can, we are going to connect the laptop and also we can go to can connect our dvd player whatever it is sound systems and everything so those are all comes under iot devices for me the best example of iot device is earbuds that's it and also we can say that um, 
mm, but the best example of iot device uh, so sensing applications or detecting applications like that at that time we are using iot internet of things so majorly sensors are involved in this particular iot like to detect and uh, transmit the data from one place one place to another place for example i am driving a car when i uh, when i close my eyes a detector using the iot detects the my eye, mo- eye motion and automatically it sends the alert or beep to that particular person so that type of detection or if any accident happens means it automatically shares the data to the particular nearest police station or nearest hospital so like these things are majorly involved in iot only so this three all uh, three are saying about the same thing only internet of things and next as i said before the data warehouse data lake and everything these those are all comes under big data and analytics so the data is nothing but the group of raw data or the raw data the raw data is nothing but a, uh, the collection of facts or a, the collection of uh, daily things or, or anything so big data refers to the collection of all kinds of data and it, under this kind of big data or analyzing this data comes under in data warehouses so is sql data warehouse hd insight data lake analytics these three are the main, main concepts of big data analytics and also artificial intelligence so nowadays artificial intelligence is growing rapidly because of everybody is going to adapt to the this ai culture so if you want to write the exam we are going to use chat gpt if you want to uh, write an assignment we are going to use chat gpt if you want to prepare for any test we are going to use chat gpt so ai is playing a key role from morning if you want to search anything so based on that uh, particular data provided by us it will search the data it is also comes under ai only if you want to search through mic it also comes under ai if you want to search through lens google lens it also comes under ai so uh, like these things are around us every day so artificial intelligence is playing a key role in our daily lives so that's why artificial intelligence is integrated with cloud to manage services more efficiently than the regular ones so um, i think the i think that's all for today i think so uh, uh yeah i think it's uh, krishna are you there krishna am i audible yeah uh for today this these are the topics i am going to i have covered this so tomorrow we are going to discuss about log analytics and uh, next further concepts called uh, security privacy and compliance and trust i think because time is going on today is sunday so everybody is not interested to learn everything in one day so i am going to sh- share this topic in next day so thank you one and all so have a nice day